Welcome to the review of quiz four on chapter nine on moles. Uh, question number one talks about uh, when limestone, calcium carbonate, is reacted with hydrochloric acid. Uh, the products are calcium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. And so when you go through write that balanced equation, you write all the ions first. So you have calcium, uh, carbonate ion, uh, hydrogen, and chlorine. Uh, calcium and chloride as the products, and then water and carbon dioxide. We then can make all the proper uh, molecules first. So plus two minus two balances out HCl. We have two chlorines to balance out the plus two. Uh, and then we can go back in and then balance the actual uh, numbers of molecules on each side. Then once you have the proper individual uh, molecules created, you can balance the equation. And so we know we have CA on one side, CA on the other, um, CO3, uh, that we're going to break apart into the C, C and C here. And then we have the water, which is H2, so we have two H's there. This going to get us two chlorines, which balances that. And we have to come for the oxygens. We have two and one is three, and we have three over there. So that balances that particular equation. Um, what mass of that calcium carbonate will be consumed when 20 grams of the hydrochloric acid reacts completely with this particular reaction. So our first step um, is to plan the grams to moles, moles to moles, and then moles back to grams. Um, you get the molecular weight uh, of uh, the product. Um, we have the calcium carbonate. Um, we have the 20 grams of the hydrochloric acid. Uh, we then can measure out uh, the uh, molar mass of hydrochloric acid, which is the, the 35.45 plus the one from, uh, from hydrogen to give us the molecular weight of hydrochloric acid. So we went from moles to moles. Um, now we're going to, gr we went from grams to moles. And now we're going from moles of hydrochloric acid to moles of calcium carbonate from that balanced reaction. We know we have a, for every one calcium carbonate, we have two hydrochloric acids, and that that's ratio comes from. And now we're going from moles of calcium carbonate to the grams of calcium carbonate, which is what we determined from the molecular mass over here. Um, so we went from grams to moles, moles to moles, and then back to grams to get our grams of calcium carbonate uh, that was consumed. What mass of carbon dioxide will be produced if that same 20 grams of hydrochloric acid reacts with the particular reaction? So once again, our plan is to go from grams to moles, moles to moles, and then moles back to grams. So we once again start with our 20 grams of hydrochloric acid. We once again are then going to move to convert that from grams to moles. We then use the ratio from the balanced reaction of hydrochloric acid to carbon dioxide. So we have two hydrochloric acids produce one carbon dioxide. So that ratio is there from the, from the balanced equation. We're now then converting moles of carbon dioxide to grams of carbon dioxide by using its molecular mass. We determined here from the mass of one carbon and two oxygens. And then so we then convert grams to moles, moles to moles, and then moles back to grams. So then we get 12.07 or 12.1 grams with significant figures. Now we're calculating the percent yield if that if we have a reaction of 233 grams of nitric oxide reacts and then 175 grams of the HNO3 is produced. So when we have that balanced particular balanced equation, once again we're going to use that process of going from grams to moles, moles to moles, and moles back to grams. So again, we start out with our known, the 230, 233 grams of nit nitric 
oxide, nitrogen dioxide. So here's that known, nitrogen dioxide. We then determine its molecular mass, which is the 46.1. So there's the number of grams of nitrogen dioxide in one mole of nitrogen dioxide. Balanced equation shows us the ratio of nitrogen uh, dioxide to the HNO3, which is the nitric acid. So that ratio is there. And now we're then converting the number of moles of nitric acid back to grams of nitric acid. And we used this process to determine that molecular weight of nitric acid. So this is the maximum we could produce if we did 100% of a conversion rate and every bit of the nitric, nitrogen dioxide was converted into nitric acid, we would produce the 212.76 grams of nitric acid. But we didn't make that much. We only made 175 grams. So what's then our yield? So then we take the amount we made, 175 grams, divided how much we could have made, our maximum amount, times 100 gets us the 82.25% or 82.2 percentage for a theoretical yield. So that's our percent yield, is how much we did make divided by how much we could make. So using this particular balanced equation, which substance is in excess when 1.5 moles of the aluminum bromide are reacted with 2.5 moles of the barium hydroxide. So you basically do the, the process of moles to moles twice. So once you do the process of moles to moles with the aluminum bromide, so we have 1.5 moles of aluminum bromide, you pick a product. It doesn't really matter which one you pick as long as you use the same product Take one of them and that becomes what your ratio is going to be. So you're going to produce something. And so we have in this case 1.25 moles of the aluminum bromide producing barium bromide at the end. So that ratio is a 2 to 3 ratio. That's our ratio here, 2 to 3. That produces then the number of moles that you can produce of that. 2.25 moles. Then you do the same thing with the amount of barium hydroxide. If you have 2.5 moles of barium hydroxide, the other reactant, how much of the same product of barium bromide can you make? So once again, we have that same ratio, or we have used the same product. In this case, a different ratio. This is a 3 to 3 ratio or a 1 to 1 ratio. Then we then determine that we can make 2.5 moles of the barium bromide if we have 2.5 moles of barium hydroxide. So since this number is smaller, it's the limiting reagent, but that's not what we asked for. The question asked for what's in, what's in excess. So this one, the barium hydroxide, is in excess. So that's what is in excess, is the barium hydroxide. What mass of water is produced when 12 grams of hydrochloric acid are reacted as follows? So we have this particular balanced equation that we're using. Once again, we're going to use our grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams plan. So we start with our given, our 12 grams of the acid. So we have 12 grams of the acid. Molecular weight of the acid gives us one mole. The ratio from the balanced equation, the 6 to 3 ratio is shown here. Now we convert then those moles of water back to grams of water with its molecular formula. So grams to moles, moles to moles, moles back to grams to give us the 2.965 or 2.967 grams of water. 
So how many moles of C3H6 will be consumed when 4.1 moles of carbon dioxide are produced in this particular equation? So here we only need to do moles to moles because our given is in moles and what we're looking for is in moles. So we just use that amount of 4.1 moles of carbon dioxide in the ratio of the balanced equation, which is a 6 to 2 ratio, which shows up here. Then that tells us for every 4 moles of carbon dioxide, we'll need 1.37 moles of the C3H6. So given this particular balanced reaction, we want to identify the limiting reagent and then the mass of the N2 that's produced. If you have 100 grams of the HCN, that are going to react with 100 grams of oxygen. So we're going to use the plan in general, grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams for each of the different reactants. So you have to basically do this operation twice. So here's the reaction for the 100 grams of the hydrogen cyanide. HCN. You have then the molecular weight of HCN is the 27, so uh, grams to then moles. Moles to moles with that ratio, that 4 to 2 ratio, that shows up there. And then of course then you use the molecular weight of N2 to convert those grams, those moles into grams. So when all is said and done, if you had 100 grams of HCN, you could produce 50.83 grams of N2. So grams to moles, moles to moles, and then moles back to grams. Ignore this and assume if you had 100 grams of oxygen, what could you produce? Once again, we have the molecular weight of oxygen gas in one mole. We use the balanced equation to convert our, our 5 to 2 ratio from our balanced equation. And then we have the 1 mole of the gas, and that weighs 28 grams. Then that gives 35 grams. So we have grams to moles, moles to moles, and then moles back to grams. So now we compare these two numbers, the 35 grams compared to the th uh, 51 grams, and since the 35 is smaller, then we know that it is the limiting reagent. Answer B. Number 9, how many moles? of iron oxide are required from a certain number of atoms or molecules, in this case atoms of carbon. So in this case we want it to go from molecules or atoms, particles, to moles, and then back to moles again. So we start out with our given, our 1.4 times 10 to the 22nd atoms, so 1.4 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of carbon. For every 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, that's one mole. So we know that that's our conversion to get from atoms to moles. We use our balanced equation to go from moles to moles. That's our balanced equation there. And then that'll give us the number of moles of iron 2 oxide, which is what we're looking for, as our unknown at the very end. So atoms to moles, moles, back to moles, and that is the answer, is in moles. Here we're converting copper to copper oxide by heating the presence of oxygen. So we have our copper or oxygen giving us copper 2 oxide. We know it's copper 2. So we know then the, the proper molecules are Cu, O2 and CO2, because O2 is diatomic. So then uh, we have the molecules correct. We can do go back and balance the equation. 
So to get O2 on this side, we have to have 2 on this side to get our O2. Then we have to have 2 on this side to balance out our, co our coppers. So that's the balanced equation. Then we have to ask the question of what mass of oxygen is required to convert 12 grams um, into the copper oxide. And so if we have as much oxygen as we need, then how much is we going to use? So once again, we have our grams to moles, moles to moles, moles back to grams plan. We start out with our known 12 grams of copper. So here's our 12 grams of copper. We then use the molecular weight of copper to get us the number of moles of copper. We then use the balanced equation to know that for every two moles of copper, we're going to use up one mole of oxygen. So there's our two to one ratio. Then we're converting from our moles of water, moles of oxygen gas, uh, to its grams of oxygen, which is the 32 grams, to get us the mass of the oxygen we need, which is 3.02 grams of the oxygen gas. And then what mass of oxygen can they be theoretically produced? Or that what mass of the carbon uh, two oxide can be theoretically produced. Well, if we start with that same 12 grams of copper and we can get the three grams that we need, so that'll get, that'll get used up, um, then we know, know that we can use the 63, the molecular weight of copper, for every one mole of copper. We know that for every two coppers that we use, we'll produce two copper oxides. So here's that balance part of the relationship. Then we're then changing from moles of copper oxide to the number of grams of copper oxide with that particular ratio. Grams to moles, moles to moles, and then moles back to grams. 15.02, which is 15.0 grams, three significant figures. And that is the review of uh, chapter four, I'm sorry, uh, quiz four, chapter nine.